For seven years, the fastest road car in the world has officially been the McLaren F1. Constructed using exotic materials, it had an engine bay lined with gold. Every aspect of the car was developed without compromise, right down to a lightweight stereo. It was reliable, practical, and could do 240.1 miles an hour. I never thought anything would go faster. But something has. The 380,000 pounds, 240.3 mile an hour Koenigsegg CCR. It's a remarkable car, not least because it was dreamt up by a Swede who had one time exported chickens to Estonia. When he was 22, Christian von Koenigsegg decided to make the fastest car in the world. He blagged a government grant, borrowed a wind tunnel from Volvo, and took over an old fighter jet factory as premises. 12 years on, he's seemingly achieved his dream. His first effort was the CC8S. It had a 4.7-litre V8 and a massive 655 horsepower. But, crucially, the car wasn't quite fast enough. So they bolted on a clever supercharger to create a colossal 806 horsepower and promptly broke the speed record. Just. So we knew it was fast, but I wanted to know if it handled. But wouldn't you just know it, our 380,000 pound car had a flat battery. So it was out with the Volvo crew bus and on with the jump leads. Are we ready? Contact. Unfortunately, within just a couple of laps, the clutch pedal went to the floor. We assumed a minor bolt had failed, but it was something we weren't tooled up to fix. A rather ignoble end for a car that promised so much, though to be honest, that was enough. So that's it, my first experience of the world's fastest supercar. But I have to say, even that short experience was a bit disappointing. It felt more like I was driving a brand new racing prototype for the first time rather than the well sorted supercar. I went up to second and third, and there was no acceleration when I opened the throttle because the gearing is so tall, perhaps, to help it reach that amazing top speed. Then the steering, when I first went to the corners, it's got too much power assistance really for track use. You don't feel the car at all. The gear changer is actually quite good. A huge lever looks horrible inside the cockpit and has a lot of movement on it, but the gears actually went in very well until, that is, the clutch pedal all went floppy. No more gears available, coasted to a halt. A very short day done. Our specialist car dealer chum, Chris Routledge of Coys, has dealt with the factory and customers a fair bit over the past 12 months and has a better idea than most about the Koenigsegg ownership experience. Well, there you have it, a Koenigsegg CCR, the fastest car in the world today, and there it lies, broken down with a faulty clutch. Now, you think that would put you off buying a Koenigsegg, but it doesn't. The people who buy these cars buy into that. When you buy a Koenigsegg, you're a factory test driver. It's all part of being on board in the earliest days of the Koenigsegg project. And none of them mind a bit. If there's a problem with your Koenigsegg, what you do is you pick up the telephone and you call the factory. And chances are you'll speak to Christian Koenigsegg himself. And you know what Christian will do for you? He'll do for you what he's doing for us. He's put a man on a plane and he's on his way here now. And this car tomorrow will be up and running again. It's that degree of intimacy that Koenigsegg owners love. It creates a loyalty. The man who's selling this one is only selling it because he's buying another one of an even higher specification. And we know a guy who's got two, one for him and one for his friends. Some people obviously take great pride in saying they own the fastest car in the world. Personally, I prefer saying I own the second fastest.